Hello everyone, it's been a while since I've used my voice, but recently I received a free game from Silosib Games called Artificer, which is a survival game that releases on Steam for early access later this month on the 24th. The developers wanted my feedback on the game, and since I'm no good at live commentary, I've gathered all my thoughts into this one video after playing the game long enough. Take it with a grain of salt, however, as this game's build is currently in alpha, and is more or less a demo of the game. So there will definitely be a few bugs and gameplay issues, a few of which I have encountered, and none of which are game-breaking. In the background is my very first playthrough of the game, and right off the bat, you're probably thinking that the game looks pretty close to another well-known survival game. At least I did. So about the game. You're a guy named Raymond Everett, and you're stuck on an alien planet called Alcor. After barely escaping your destroyed spaceship, along with your crew, you pretty much have to go around the planet exploring and not dying, while also progressing the plot as you learn that there's much more to this planet, and that's when the game starts to get much more interesting. So about the controls and interface, they're simple and easy to pick up after fiddling around for a bit, though some of the default keybinds are out of reach. You can rebind them, of course, so it's not a big deal. While the instructions are visually big enough, the HUD is kind of small and out of the way. And also, the descriptions and numbers in some cases are way too small and require me to get close to my screen to read. While this does give me a lot to look at in the overworld, this isn't perfectly good since I have many instances of tunnel vision. Whether I'm running away from threats, trying to progress the story, or in the middle of a dialogue, I have to constantly remind myself to check this and that so I don't get off track or die. It took me a while before I got used to the interface and controls, though that's probably just me figuring out the game. As you can tell in the background, I don't usually play these types of games. So what about gameplay? There are two modes, Adventure and Casual. Adventure mode is you get one life. If you die, that's it, and you have to start everything over, and you're gonna die a lot. Casual mode is infinite lives. If you die, you just respawn, and you don't lose anything in your inventory. So after the brief tutorial on how the controls work, you're pretty much just stranded where you are, aside from the suggestion of finding the rest of your crew. The first part of the game is pretty much experimentation, clicking and interacting with this and that, and learning the game as time passes. The world is enormous, and your foot speed is a tad slow, with no extra mobility options. So good luck trying to get back to your base if you're deep in the wilderness. You do have an objective marker so that you'll have some idea of where you need to go, but it's not active at all times and you'll have to manually check it each time, making it annoying to deal with as you'll just have to multitask more. On top of that, you'll get another objective marker later as you progress that you'll have to constantly activate and then pick up again. If you die before you can pick it up, you better remember where you dropped it because it doesn't come back and the darn thing blends in with the floor, so good luck trying to find it. You also learn very quickly that you'll need to craft some stuff and stockpile on supplies before you can progress. Unless you're me, which took me a whole second playthrough to realize that. Otherwise, you'll find your health in the low, and yourself in the dark, figuratively and literally very often. There are a lot of things to craft along with a skill tree, and some quick puzzles to fiddle around with to expand your abilities and resources. All of the crafting and minigames are very quick to do, allowing you to get back to the game quickly as well. I spent the better part of my playthrough hunting for materials and crafting stuff. It was relaxing. Other than that, there are a few types of enemies to deal with. They're either strong, annoying, or both. Very often, both. But thankfully, you can outrun most of them, and if you're far away enough, they'll ignore you and turn around, making the combat system a bit more forgiving and not so much a chore. Overall, this game has potential, but so far, it's kind of rusty, which is alright since this is an early build. There's some good gameplay quirks, such as making a plant transparent when you're behind it, and also the quick mini-games that you can do to unlock new craftables. But the biggest issue with this game at the moment is that whenever something is annoying, it's boring. And when it's not boring, it's annoying. There needs to be a way that doesn't make getting from one place to another so boring and mundane, and or make the combat system so tedious. Especially if you're facing off against multiple enemies, or simply grinding for needed resources. The game gets repetitive if you're not progressing the plot, and there's not much variety until near the end of the demo. At least until you've gotten used to the places and creatures you encounter the deeper you go. And honestly, so far, there's not much. I did enjoy the game to a degree, but I need to be honest when I say I probably won't touch this game again until it starts becoming more complete. I'll say again though, to take this with a grain of salt, since I don't normally play these type of games. 
because you know Cuphead doesn't really equal this. Besides, if you like these kinds of survival games, then go ahead and try it. And when it comes out on July 24th, maybe you can give me your thoughts. Cheers everyone, and see you next time.